kept back here at the Petit Magazine. Instead, pits would be dug to either side of the cannon platform to hold all of these iron shots. With that inserted, we're now ready to or put the wadding on top of Started. Now we're ready to seat the wadi on top of the cannonball against the breach. And so the man with the rammer is ordered once more to ram it in. or ram it home. Now he throws this down, this time again eight or nine blows to seat everything firmly down against the breach. And then he will or draw out the rammer and return it to its place. Now with this loaded cannon, we're going to have to next Oh, or take up our lever. This cannon can't fire until it's back up into this hole in front of it known as the embrasure. And so once more we will embed, it. Or embed this into similar but slightly different spots in the axle and then we will oh, battery. Or roll it back forward into the battery. Now going forward the tilt of the cannon platform allows it to easily roll back into position. But instead of leaving, instead we're going to get the order to or to the cascabel and to the cheeks. Now we do this so the gunner can then order himself to what name? Or aim. He steps into this gap known as the trail, and with his voice, he's going to order oh, oh. or up, up, or ba, or down. And we will raise or lower the back of the gun for aiming. Now, to ensure there's no confusion, at the same time, with hand gestures, he's going to order those men on the cheeks to shift the back of it to the left or right. Once he's satisfied with the aim, he'll we'll say, oh, I'm all safe. And we just lay down our lever. He goes right into priming the piece with his priming horn, as well as that brass up and glass. Those gunners or observants not needed. We step back behind the platform. And that second servant on the left, he takes up the lid stop. He's going to make sure that he has a nice, hot, well-exposed ember on the end of that slow match. So he, as I said, will not be embarrassed when he's first ordered to oh, but, uh, or take up the lid stop. It also means take up his post to the right of the gun. He steps on up to the platform. Now he's going to, upon the order, oh, the bra. or raise it up high on your arms. So it gives a nice sweeping motion through the air. He will be able to oh. Wow. Right on to me. Immediately we will <laughs> take up your levers once more. <laughs> now what you may know about this exercise. What do you think was gonna happen? It does take a bit. That's entirely a exercise has the express purpose of executing five shots in an hour, but ask, yeah, five an hour. to be able to do that for 24 hours straight. Wow. Now in order to do that, what you have to be able to do is all the steps in between to make sure this is done step safely. So imagine that periodically you would have to sweep off the cannon platform. You have to get all loose powder that had built up from that. You have to as well be able to switch out men from different positions and brush off their clothing to keep powder from building up upon them. Now, this exercise is built with the idea that your goal is to either attack or defend in a siege. And in this game of endurance, your goal is both to fire for long periods, but also to be accurate and hit as hard as you possibly can. And in order to do this, you've got to take the time to do such steps as carefully measure out the powder. If you don't do that, you don't get the same force on every shot. You've got to take the time to pack that wadding exactly the same with every shot. You've got to take the time as well to very carefully aim. Now, where this cannon is, is absolutely no accident. 
Notice this cannon is not standing in the middle of an open field. It is in its battery. So in front of it, we have baskets of dirt known as gabion. Each one three feet in diameter, six feet tall, and there's three rows of them. So this cannon is set behind nine feet of packed earth. This is the place that holdable ground that you need so you can actually take the time to make well-aimed, accurate shots. Now imagine, too, this is one cannon in a battery. Most batteries are going to have four, five, maybe even a half dozen. Now if you take all of those together, each one firing five shots in an hour, it means you're shooting practically continuously. And if each cannon is taking the time to carefully aim and shoot at the same spot on the enemy's walls, you're going to be able to rip a hole in that really quickly. All of this takes time. And that is what is built into this exercise. Now, note too that each shot going to feature the cannonier, the gunner, taking up a post just outside where the smoke is. Because he's not just aiming the cannon, he's trying to watch the landing of that shot so that he, on the next shot, is going to be able to correct and make sure he's hitting exactly where he wants. Now, this mode of firing is exactly the same as it was practiced anywhere on the frontiers of France itself, whether along the Rhine or the Pyrenees or the Alps. And what is exceptional is that it's not different, it's that it's all the way here in the frontier of North America. Imagine these heavy iron cannons first shipped across the Atlantic Ocean up the St. Lawrence River, up the Richelieu River, installed on the walls of this fort. And then in the course of 48 hours, without oxen or cattle who were too weak to move these guns, by hand, these cannons were first shifted all the way down to the Lachute River. Then taken upriver, dragged up the 220 vertical feet to get up to the level of Lake George, installed on pontoons, two bateaus lashed together with the deck, and then floated 31 miles to be emplaced in batteries just like this one to execute a proper formal siege, ripping Fort William Henry to shreds.